Hello children, welcome back to our YouTube channel at First Presbyterian Church of Carn City. I'm bringing to you again this day another story for the Christmas season. The This story and the one that you will see after this when uh, we read that story are both from a series of books. And the, the title of the series is The Berenstein Bears. This series of books has covers many different topics, and this was a series of books that Pastor Jen loved to read and have read to her um, when I was a child by my mother. The one that we're going to read today for our Christmas season is The Berenstein Bears and the Joy of Giving. It is written by Jan and Mike Berenstein, and it's published by Zonder Kids in 2010. So I read this story to you for your enjoyment and for you to help think about the joy of giving this Christmas season versus the joy of receiving. So I invite you to hear this story and look at the pictures and wonder with me about what what the joy of giving, how it, how it makes you feel and, and what it means. So let's begin. It was the week before Christmas and all over bear country, everyone was busy getting ready for the big day. They were Christmas shopping and Christmas decorating and Christmas everything. Down at the chapel in the woods, the cubs of bear country were busy getting ready for their Christmas Eve play. It was the story of the first Christmas, and brother and sister had an important role. They were to be the camel of the three wise bears. Sister was the front end of the camel, and brother brought up the rear. They thought it was the best costume ever. Mrs. Ursula, their Sunday school teacher, was directing. All right, wise bears, she called. Inner stage right. The three about wise bears came on stage. They carried gifts and wore long robes, crowns, and fake beards. They followed the Christmas star made of foil-covered cardboard that hung above the stage. The first wise bear was played by Sammy Bruno, who had a loose front tooth that made him a little hard to understand. A thar, a thar, he cried. I see a thar. Mrs. Ursula sighed. Okay, camel, she called. You're on. Sister and brother followed the three wise bears, but it was hard to see out of the costume, and sister accidentally knocked over a palm tree. The three wise bears tripped, going down in a tangle. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mrs. Ursula. We'll never be ready. Sorry, Mrs. Ursula, said Sister, poking her head out. It's hard to see in there. I'll need to make you, your peepholes bigger, said Mrs. Ursula. That's enough for today, cubs. It's time to go home. The cubs took off their costumes and went into the chilly evening air. Brrr, shivered sister. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. Yeah, agreed brother. And looking that way, too. The whole neighborhood was decorated for Christmas. Sister and brother walked home in the soft glow of many colored lights.
The next day, the Bear family went shopping. It was time for brother and sister to pick out a few special gifts. This year, they had two crisp $10 bills from Grizzly Gramps and Gran to spend on others. Of course, brother and sister hoped they would have some money left for themselves. Sister was saving for a brand new bear bee doll, and brother wanted a special rubber band powered model airplane. Papa and Honey helped brother do his shopping while Mama went with sister. Brother picked out a Bear Bee doll outfit that he found on sale for sister, and sister bought a small airplane model for brother. Each cost just a few dollars. Mama and Papa thought that maybe each cub should have spent more money on one another. What about the joy of giving? whispered Mama to Papa. It seems brother and sister only care about the joy of getting. True, agreed Papa, but let's not, fig let's not interfere. They'll learn about the joy of giving for themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Over the next few days, Christmas excitement in bear country grew. Brother and sister could hardly wait. They were going to be a camel and get lots of presents too. Play rehearsals went well. Sister could see better out of the bigger peepholes and everyone knew their lines. But it was still a little hard to understand Sammy Brunin. When Christmas Eve finally arrived, practically everyone in bear country jammed into the chapel in the woods to see the cubs perform. Hush fell as the curtain opened and the play began. First, the angel Gabriel came to Mary, telling her that she would give birth to Jesus. Then Joseph and Mary journeyed to Bethlehem, where the innkeeper gave them shelter in a stable. There, Mary gave birth to a tiny baby who, laid, who was laid in a manger. An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, sharing the good news of Jesus' birth so they could go and worship the newborn king. Finally, the three wise bears and their faithful camel trooped on stage. The foil-covered Christmas star hung high above the stable, sparkling in the spotlight. A star, a star, I see a star, Sammy said clearly. His loose, tooth, his loose tooth had come out backstage. The three wise bears kneeled before Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. The shepherds and the angels joined them. Everyone bowed low before the tender baby. The three wise bears opened their treasures and gave Jesus their precious gifts. The audience grew very still. Then someone in the back began to sing, began to softly sing, Silent night, holy night. Come, all is bright. 
and the rest of the audience joined in near the end. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Peeking out of the camel costume, tears came to sister and brother bear's eyes. It seemed they had never understood the joy of giving until that moment. All the gifts of all the Christmases of all the years went back to those first gifts given to the tiny baby long ago. The Christmas Eve play was over and the audience cheered. Everyone felt the spirit of Christmas had been with them that night. On Christmas morning, brother and sister led the family downstairs bright and early. But instead of heading to their own piles of presents, they went to their gifts for each other. Merry Christmas, they said, holding out their presents. From one end of the camel to another, said brother. Thanks, laughed sister. You're a first-rate backup. Brother and sister were delighted with their gifts and gave each other big bear hugs. Honey opened her presents and brother and sister joined in. In the back of their minds, though, they were still thinking about the money they had left over from their shopping trip. Later that morning, the family went to the chapel in the woods for the Christmas Day service. A light snow covered the ground and all of bear country glistened in the sun. On the way, sister and brother noticed a group of bears playing Christmas carols. They were collecting money for the needy in a big black pot. Brother and sister looked at each other, dug into their pockets, and dropped all of their money in to the pot. Mama and Papa smiled with pride. You know what the good book says, Mama told them. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. We know, brother said, we receive an awful lot, so it's time we gave some of it back. Look, said sister, feeling in her pocket, I still have a quarter. Honey reached for it and sister put it in her hand. Then Honey, holding Papa, holding on to Papa, went to the black pot and dropped the quarter in. The bears playing music paused. Merry Christmas, they said. Merry Christmas, answered the bear family. So in this story, we hear about the birth of Jesus by Mary and, and her husband Joseph and how they laid him in a manger and the gifts that the wise men uh, gave to baby Jesus and how the joy of giving is so much greater than the joy of receiving. 
I wonder what it's like if you were to give a present to someone in your family or a a good friend or a grandparent or even a stranger, like putting money in the offering plate at church or putting money in the bucket for a Salvation Army. How much joy does that bring you? I wonder how much joy that brings you. What's the greatest gift you've ever been given? By someone else. Think about the joy that you get from receiving gifts and how much joy you give to someone else when you give them a gift. Particularly in the holidays when it's hard for a lot of people to have food on the table. Think about how giving money to a food bank or collecting food for a food bank or even collecting warm coats during the winter seasons for people who don't have the money to kick coats and how how great of a joy and a blessing that is to their lives that you think about them and that you care about them. So I want you to think about ways in which you can, can do some sort of gift of giving, whether it's collecting cans or collecting warm clothing or giving a gift to a friend or donating money to a cause that helps people during the holidays. So think about that, and as you do, we will come back the next time, and we will read another story from the Berenstein Bears called The Christmas Angel. Until that time, I hope you have a wonderful day and weeks to come.